Hey everybody, my name is Alex, and this is part three of our dedicated node and dedicated Smesher tutorial walkthrough series. So far, what we should have done is set up our Smesher, then move to our node and install Go, which is a dependency of Go Space Mesh. And now we are going to install our Go Space Mesh node. Um, and just make sure if you're starting on this video, go back and do the install Go video first because you do need to install Go in order for this to work. Again, I'm on Ubuntu server. You could also be on Ubuntu desktop. Make sure you have the latest version. Make sure you are fully updated. That being said, we are going to install some dependencies again, but these are actually Linux dependencies. and. Some of them are hard dependencies. Some of them are just nice to have. So I'll go over them real quick. Uh, we're actually gonna do sudo install. We will need unzip, which is going to unzip our go space mesh file. We need tmux. This is so that we can set up a persistent session, which will allow us to attach and detach from our terminal. So when we want to leave our node up, which is a very good practice, is to leave your node going 24 seven. We can detach from the terminal and let it continue to go. And that's great for if you are SSHing into your node, or even if you're just using it at your uh, like desktop, you don't wanna always have the terminal up. You wanna be able to detach from it because I know I've done it before. I've closed out a terminal that I meant to keep running and it caused me a bunch of pain. So amazing practice to just create a persistent session, do all your work in that session, and then you can always attach and detach to, uh, to and from it very easily. libpocl2, that, that is going to be a OpenCL library for the node. It's very essential. CL info, uh, it's very soft dependency. It's not something that you really need. It's good to have, um, just I'm actually curious if I'll get a response from CL info L without installing any sort of drivers. I think I will, but let's find out. Let's, I should have actually been installing this while I was explaining it because it's 700 megabytes. Uh, but in the meantime, while we're waiting for that, let's check out the latest version of Go Space Mesh. I know there was a new one that was released today day because today is the first day of rewards uh, if you're watching this in the future which I think everybody pretty much has to be <laughs> because I haven't uploaded it yet um, it's a pretty exciting day but let me go to the releases page yes critical fix there was a slight bug this morning but the developers fixed it real quick uh, they were on top of it uh, and it really didn't cause too much pain so version 1.0.15 is the latest version for Go Space Mesh. You're gonna wanna always make sure you're keeping up to date with this. So while we're here, let's just copy the Linux zip file down here and just keep that ready because that's one of the first steps we're gonna do is download that zip file. So it looks like my updates are done. Let's move back to the terminal so we can keep this moving. All right. So if you have saved that zip file, we're now going to download it, wget and linux.zip. We got that downloading. Now that we are done, we see it's next to our go directory and we can do onzip. Uh, actually, what I'm gonna do is make dir uh, go dash space mesh. We wanna make a folder and we want to, let's just, move the linux.zip into go uh, no slash just go space mesh and we'll go into go space mesh and we will unzip it in here now we can see we have the linux.zip and we have a linux folder i don't like it to go from go space mesh then into linux so actually what we're going to do is cd into this linux directory we're going to do move dot slash star, which is going to say, hey, move everything in there, or select everything in this directory. And then we're gonna do dot dot slash and say, move it up one directory into the go space mesh folder. If we do LS, there's nothing in here now. If we go back and we do LS, now we have go space mesh, two other files that we're gonna need. 
That also means we can do rm-r, do a little cleanup here, get rid of the Linux folder, and get rid of the linux.zip file. Now we're down to just our three files that we need. Let's hit clear. I know I'm going quick. Luckily, it's a video, so you can always go back and rewatch something. Okay, so we are setting up a single node, and it's going to be a dedicated node that we move our smashing data, our post data, over once it's complete. So we're just going to download the config file, and let me switch back over to Chrome. You can scroll down and you can save this link because it's it shouldn't change, but all the way down to 1.0.9, right click, copy that configs.spacemesh.network config mainnet.json file. Come back over to your terminal, wget again, download that config file. And there isn't anything we need to change in that. It is a good template. When we bring over our post data, we are going to need to change some things in there in order to make it work. But for now, we're good to just move on to the next step where we're actually going to start listening to, uh, we're actually gonna start our node up just listening. We're not going to be mining or smashing or anything like that. We're just going to purely listen. And I will copy a command here. Since we're in our directory, it's dot slash go space mesh. And I like to copy and paste because it reduces the chance that I type an error and I'm cheating. I have notes. I'm not doing this by memory. I am definitely not good enough for that. All right, so starting from the beginning, we're listening on these ports here, which um, just 7513, if you're running multiple nodes, which I'm not gonna cover here, you're gonna have to switch up these ports. We're doing dash dash config. So this first part, pretty much the same for everybody, dash dash config. Uh, what we're saying here is dot slash. That's saying the current directory, use the config mainnet JSON that we just downloaded. Dash D, that's a data directory that Node is going to use. It's going to put a bunch of files in there. Uh, we're just saying create a directory called SM data in our current directory and store everything in there. We don't even have to create that file. The Node is going to be gracious enough to create the file for us. And uh, okay, so I'm going to run this. I'm not running it in Tmux yet. We'll actually just run this, make sure it works, because there's a high chance that something's broken. But let's give it a go. Boom. So I know it looks kind of weird, but this is what it looks like when it initializes. It's going to start streaming through like tons and tons of text here in a second. And all that means is that we are syncing with the node. So it's that simple. Um, I know that the instructions that I've that I went through to get this set up were way more confusing than this. Uh, it gets a little bit more difficult when we actually import our post data, but honestly, I've worked it out. It's it's pretty simple. That's going to be the next video, but let's just let this sync up here real quick. It gets upset if I try to exit out of it while it's syncing so quickly uh, because we're not doing any space. Uh, or any post data, it shouldn't really take too long to catch up. But let's just give it a second. I know this is boring. I do everything in one take and I hate editing. So I know that this is probably boring for you to just listen to me talk Well, it goes. But all I'm using is OBS to make these videos. I have no video editing skills. Uh, you can just pretend like I've fast forwarded through this um, so that you don't have to wait for it. Honestly, like get a coffee, um, you know, check your phone. Sure, there's probably a good meme. Maybe join the Discord or something and say hello. Check out, uh, you know, anything. You're at your computer. I'm sure there's something fun to do while you watch this video and you listen to me ramble on while we're. I, I'm surprised it's taking this long. I think it's because like we're actually producing blocks now that this takes a lot longer than it used to. But the last few times I ran this, it was like five seconds. So let's uh, let's just wait in silence.
Okay, maybe I will whip out my editing skills to make this less painful. Oh, oh, ah, uh, wait. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah, we'll get some warnings. That's totally fine. You're going to see some warns. It's it's probably not great, but you're going to see some warns. Cool. Let's close this out. Yes, it worked perfectly fine. Control C to exit out of the node. And what we want to do is actually open this up in Tmux because Tmux is a way better way to do this. We can do that through Tmux new dash S for session, and we'll just call it node. I mean, that's what it is. It's a node. And we're going to run the same command here that we did previously. So silly me, let's exit. Or actually, we don't even need exit. We can do control B and then D to detach. Press the up key a few times and just copy, unless you had it saved somewhere else, just copy what you did already. And instead of doing new this time, because it already exists, we're going to do attach, tmux attach dash T for, I guess, terminal. And then you will do just node because that's what we named it. Okay, paste that in there and let it go. It should take way less time because we've already synced with the node. But while that's going, we can do control B, shift parentheses, and that'll split it vertically. And then I'll do control B, shift percentage, and that will split it horizontally. And I like to just keep H top up because I love just to see what's going on. You can see I've got eight gigs on this thing, four cores, like it is nothing special. I hope it gets through the post data in the time in the, the poet registration window. This is going to be an exciting uh, registration window coming up. So control B and then left or up or down to move between these windows. So control B to the right will bring me back over to H top control B to the left will bring me over to my command prompt. And what we're going to do is actually query our node to make sure it's working. So in the previous video, we talked about getting the highest ATX. And that was difficult because we didn't have a node. And that's really the only way to get it. I'm hoping they publish it publicly somewhere, like there's a, a website you can go to or a way to just pull it down from uh, like a, a server somewhere. But we can do this grp curl and activation service dot highest, and that's gonna get you the highest ATX. So we can see ATX ID, and then we have this right here. This is the highest ATX. So if you need this in the future for your smashing, you can definitely grab it on any of your running nodes. So as long as you have one running node, you can use this grp curl to get it set up. But there's actually a lot more things you can do with grp curl. So I'll have a whole video on some of the commands you can do, but here's one called admin service event stream. And this will say uh, basically the, the main events, let me do control B, here we go. So I can scroll. These are like the main events that happened. Uh, this is actually the last one. So known computer randomness beacon, randomness beacon. Uh, I don't have any smashing data, so there's not actually really anything exciting in here. Uh, let's control C, uh, control C. Let's clear the screen. Let's get a better one. Let's do status. Let's do the node service, node service status. And we can see we're connected to 14 peers. We're synced up to 8103, but the top layer is 82. 89 so we're a little bit behind but it is still sinking uh let's see if we run it again yep 81 16 so we're still catching up to the top layer that's not a problem uh we'll just let it continue to sink but we have our node set up so the next step is you're just going to wait for your smashing data or for your smasher to finish creating the post data and then we're going to move it over to this computer. So that's going to be the next step. And we'll go over everything that we need to do there. There's going to be some modifications we need to make to our node. And of course, we're going to be physically moving the drive over and getting it set up for the node to submit the 
proof for the poet registration. So thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Feel free to like and subscribe, all that jazz. Thanks.